Hey guys. Tim Lurch here. I'm just going to um, follow up on a, a lesson that I put up a couple of weeks ago. Um, talked about arpeggios in that lesson and how to learn a number of arpeggios that are related to each other in the same area. And we're going to look at the same thing today with chords. Um, and uh, I kind of lightheartedly refer to this uh, video as uh, breaking out of the cage because I know that the cage system is very popular and I think it's not a problem except for if you don't understand um, the, the, uh, the real intent of it. Um, the, the title cage system says C, A, uh, D, G, and E as if those are the names of the chords that you play in the first position and then you would transport up the fingerboard. My contention is that calling them by their uh, open position names creates sometimes some confusion. So I think the better way to do it without throwing away the entire system is to think of the names of the the chords or the way to categorize the chords is by their interval spelling rather than by some arbitrary first position name. Okay, so we'll just um, say that and then this is going to be the the solution to that. Okay, so don't this is not me saying the case system is no good. It just mean it's me saying that the the naming of the of the chord shapes in the system can, can create a little problem if you don't understand the intervallic relationship. Uh, that's available. Okay, so we're going to take a look at um, some basic chords which should all be seen as part of a family. So for instance, if I have a D major chord at the fifth fret and in the cage system this might be called the A shape. Well there's the problem is it's a, it's a D chord and then it's got another letter name. So I prefer to call this shape the 1513 shape on the middle set. One, five, one, three. These are not frets, these are interval numbers. The root, we call one. The fifth, we call five. Then another one, and then a three. And you could say there's a five up on top if you want to go that far, but for our purposes today, we're just going to look at the middle set of four strings. So if we know what the numbers are, then manipulating this chord to create all different varieties of chords based on the same root is possible. So if I have this D chord, if I move one note, which is the D in the on the G string, if I move it down by a fret, I get a D major 7. Very common voicing. If I move that note down again, I get a D7 or D dominant 7. Usually it's just called D7. So we have D major, D major 7 because it's got a natural 7 in it. D 7 because it's got a flat 7 in it, also known as D dominant 7, usually abbreviated to D7. And then D6, which is a little bit of more of a grab, but it's a very important part of the entire family. And that was all the movement is on the G string in this case. sounds like maybe a song or two that you might have heard before. Excuse me. So all of these with a D root and the different qualities, major, major seven, dominant seven, and major six, they're all in a family. They're all based on the same sort of structure. And then this root, fifth, and third stays the same for the whole time, and then in the middle note just travels. So to learn all those chords as being part of one picture uh, is very helpful. And um, the, the spelling by number is the most helpful thing here. So if we try and say the names of these notes, it's going to be what I call alphabet soup, and it's not going to be clear. And then if we move it one fret, it's no longer uh, this, uh, applicable. The numbers are applicable at any fret. That's important, too. Okay, so now if we take a minor version of that, and we have a D minor, so we flatted the third. So we have a D major, then we lower the third, and it's D minor. So we understand something there. There's, no, there's, there's um, information in the numbering system that is logical and helps us understand something, rather than just naming the notes with letters. So there's D minor. Here's D minor major 7, D minor 7, and D minor 6. 
So, the beautiful thing is, is we still just moved the G string. And we got four new minor type chords that are related to each other by virtue of the fact that the frame of the chord is the same. And all those chords are very common, very valuable, and important to learn. So, the A shape in the cage system is more than just an A major chord. Uh, it's actually a 1-5-1-3 structure, and then the 1 in the middle can flow down chromatically to get these four qualities, okay? Four colors of the same quality, right? I guess that would be a better way to say it. All right, so that's one of the of the five cage things. Um, if we did the same, I'm going to do it up here though. I'm going to do a G uh, chord here, and it's nominally in the cage system, this would be known as the C shape, but of course it's not a C anymore, it's just a shape that looks like it did when it was a C. So we're going to name it 1351. And then we're going to do a similar kind of manipulation. So we lower the 1, which is now on top of the chord, and we have G major 7. And then we lower that note again, and we have G dominant 7. And then we lower it again, and we have G6. So there we have G. G major 7. Dominant 7, also known as G7, and then G6. You might say, well, dang, Tim, I don't think I want to play those big stretched out things. I think that you have a point there, and that's why uh, we have more than one um, open position chord because of the way the guitar is tuned. This particular voicing makes it a little bit difficult because the root is on the top and we need to send it south <laughs> or toward the nut and that can create uh, stretches that might be uncomfortable. But again, if you're going to stretch, keep your first finger straight rather than curved and you'll have a better, a better time of it. You can go all the way maybe down to there. Okay, so those are the two main types of shapes on the guitar. Now the other uh, three caged shapes uh, are variations on those, only finding the root on a different string. So it should be known that the E shape on, in caged and the A shape in caged and the, the, uh, the so-called D shape in caged are all the same, really. Musically, they're all the same. Physically on the guitar, the picture is a little different. So um, that's something that has to be accounted for. But if you name them by number rather than by a chord, an arbitrary chord letter name, then you'll be able to more quickly understand the, the fact that they're the same, even though they have a different uh, pattern on the guitar. The only reason they have a different pattern on the guitar is because the B string is tuned one fret uh, uh, lower than all the rest of the strings, and so when we engage the B string, the shape needs to accommodate that. Okay, so what I would recommend is taking a look at uh, these two uh, uh, shapes of uh, what we called, I called the A shape, right? The so-called A shape, which I'm not a big fan of calling it that, but the 1513 shape and its variants. And then the 1351 shape. Oh, sorry. And then put that on the top set of four, and then put it on the bottom set of four, and you'll have the whole business. And it will make a lot more sense to you, perhaps, in terms of breaking out of the cage. Because, like anything, the cage system is an expedient which then creates some barriers and some problems if you don't really go deeply into it. Um, so if you're at the point of saying, oh, I can move this D chord shape around, the cage system tells me that, and then you come up here and you say, well, I'm going to put my D up here. Well, it's no longer a D. It's a, it might be the D shape, but it's, it's uh, really an A chord when it's up there.
And that little problem of having a letter name that describes the shape and then another letter name that describes the actual chord you're playing sometimes creates confusion for, for uh, guitar players. And uh, since this is a guitaristic thing, it can be very helpful, but communicating with other people might not be so easy if that's the way you think about it. But if you think of it as one, five, one, three, it's one, five, one, three at every fret, including down there where we might call it a D. Okay, so that's my little take on uh, breaking out of the cage using a system which is inherently fine and good to use, only making sure you don't get stuck in uh, a problem with it later on.